Well, uh, welcome. My name is uh, uh, John Berzerot. I'm the director of the Reese Institute for Conservation of Natural Resources at Lenore Rhine uh, University. And I'm here with uh, Roy Cardato uh, from the John Locke Foundation. And uh, I want to th uh, thank the John Locke Foundation for uh, helping sponsor uh, this event and also to the people at the Convention Center as well for uh, helping uh, set this up and for, for the, all the film crews that are here as well. Um, you notice when you came in on your seats, there was uh, an agenda for tonight's event. And then there's also a card from the uh, John Locke Foundation. If you are interested in the Locke Foundation, uh, please fill that out and pass it to the center of the aisle. There's also a survey form uh, on uh, global climate change and, and issues related to energy. So we would ask you also to fill that out. And as you do, pass that to the center aisle as well. And then finally, you'll find an index card. And uh, you'll be able to use that for uh, writing questions down for uh, the speakers that will happen at the end of our program. So I'm very happy uh, to welcome you to Hickory. Um, and I'm uh, really honored to be here and to introduce the speakers. Um, uh, our first speaker for the night is uh, Dr. William Schlesinger. And Dr. Schlesinger is the president of the Cary Institute of Ecosystem S uh, Studies. Um, and before coming to the Institute, he served a dual capacity as, uh, at Duke University as both the James B. Duke Professor of Biogeochemistry and the Dean of the Nicholas School of the Environment and Earth Sciences. He has degrees from Dartmouth College and Cornell University and has been investigating the link between environmental chemistry and global climate change for over 30 years. Uh, Dr. Schlesinger is the author or co-author of over 180 scientific papers. His textbook, uh, Biogeochemistry Analysis of Climate Change is a widely uh, taught textbook at the university level. He's an elected member of both the National Academy of Sciences and the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, and he's also uh, the past, past president of the Ecological Society of America and the Aldo Leopold Leadership Fellow. Uh, our other speaker is Dr. John Christie, and he is a professor of atmospheric science and director of the Earth System Science Center at the University of Alabama uh, at Huntsville, where he began studying global climate uh, issues since 1987. Uh, Dr. Christie received both his master's and PhD degrees in atmospheric sciences from the University of Illinois. Um, in 1989, with uh, Dr. Roy Spencer, uh, uh, Dr. Christie developed a global temperature data set from microwave data observed from satellites beginning in 1979. For this achievement, um, the Spencer Christie team was awarded NASA's Medal for Exceptional Scientific Achievement. Dr. Christie has served as a contributor um, and lead author um, for the UN reports by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. And uh, he has or is serving on five National Research Council panels or committees and has performed research funded by NASA uh, NOAA, the Department of Energy, and the Department of Transportation. Uh, so uh, our, um, each speaker will be given 20 minutes to uh, present their view of the global climate change issues. Um, both speakers will then be given 10 minutes to respond or a comment um, uh, to their fellow scientist. Uh, we will then take a, a short break, at which point we'll collect your questions and uh, uh, finally, the speakers will respond to your questions in the, in the last uh, part of the uh, program. And if you uh, have a question for a particular speaker, you could put their name at the top of your question, or you might be uh, just asking a general question uh, for um, either of the speakers. So uh, we'll, go again, we'll go ahead and get started, and Dr. Schlesinger will uh, begin. Thanks, John. Thanks for having me here tonight. I know that uh, climate change has been a big issue in the election uh, last fall. It's a major issue facing this state with its uh, North Carolina Commission on Climate Change that is uh, uh, trying to work out what the, the state of North Carolina should do uh, about the issue. Uh, I hope that uh, 2009 is really the turning point when we go from talk about whether this is, is an issue uh, to whether uh, and what we can do about the issue. 
uh, the American Geophysical Union uh, just this year published a, a compilation of, of the belief of scientists and the public uh, on climate change and whether it was due to humans uh, that showed more than 90 percent of the climate scientists in this country, publishing climate scientists in this country, uh, have no difficulty uh, saying that uh, the, the earth is warming and at least a significant fraction of it is due to uh, human activities. Um, I guess what I'm saying is that I hope that we are not treating an unhealthy patient uh, that is our planet, uh, hoping that we don't have to make any uh, uh, drastic action, surgery or whatever, that, that one last blood test will show uh, that we've been wrong. Uh, I think we're beyond that point. I think we really have to begin to think uh, about the kinds of actions that we will take on this problem. So I want to give us five things that I think that I see reasonable agreement on in the scientific community. Uh, I don't find anybody uh, that doubts that carbon dioxide is rising in Earth's atmosphere uh, today and that it started to do so at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution in the late 1800s. It started off at about 270 parts per million in the atmosphere, and today I would take a guess that as we started this program, it was about 385 parts per million uh, in the room. So it's gone up by roughly a third of the content uh, that's in the room. I don't think there's anybody that doubts that carbon dioxide is one of a suite of gases that we call greenhouse gases and that the concentrations of them in the atmosphere warm planets, not just planet Earth, but, but any planet that we know uh, something about. Water vapor is another one, methane is another one. Uh, we should all be thankful that there's a certain natural level of these gases in the atmosphere. Uh, without the natural or background level, the temperature of planet Earth in its orbit around the sun would be the, below the freezing point of water. Uh, oceans would be frozen from top to bottom. We wouldn't be here as higher forms of life discussing this tonight. Uh, so there's a natural greenhouse effect uh, that really shouldn't concern us too much. Uh, what we really want to focus our attention is whether we're changing the greenhouse effect by increasing the concentrations of carbon dioxide uh, in the atmosphere. I think we can all agree from a variety of lines of work that in fact the Earth has been getting warmer in the last few decades. Uh, we see this in data out of the National Data, uh, National, uh, data Center for Climate in, in Asheville. Uh, we see it in satellite records of, of the Earth. Uh, we see it in the early migration patterns of birds arriving every spring. Uh, up in New York State, we see it in the record of the temperature in the Hudson River for the last 60 years. All of these show an increase in temperature. Uh, there are different ways of looking at it, some with thermometers, some with birds telling us uh, what thermometers might otherwise tell us, uh, but they all show the planet uh, warming. We see breakup of ice, the sea ice in the Arctic, uh, and uh, ice shelves in Antarctica, some of which are 10 to 15,000 years old. So this looks like uh, something new to the planet in the polar region. The warming that we record seems to be strongest at the poles at night during the winter. That's exactly where the climate models say it should be, and also consistent with the idea that it's the loss and the blockage of loss of heat radiation out of planet Earth rather than changes in the sun's input uh, that make a difference. And I think we could all, or we'd find a vast majority of the scientific community agree that the Earth has changed temperature and has changed carbon dioxide in the past. Uh, there's been fluctuations of these markedly in the last two million years during the glacial interglacial period. No question about that. But in the last eight to 10,000 years, which spans the entire record of humans living in organized society, that is with language, culture, transportation, money, uh, largely living in cities, uh, that the climate has been remarkably stable, and until the Industrial Revolution uh, began, uh, the carbon dioxide in Earth's atmosphere was remarkably stable.